Hey guys, it's Mr. Walker here, and welcome to 5th grade at Pasco eSchool. We are your 5th grade teachers. You have myself, Mr. Walker, we have Miss Gary, we have Miss Levy, Miss Rogers, and Miss Heesh. And we are all super excited to be able to work with you and to get to know you and to grow with you this year at Pasco eSchool. Our theme this year is Level Up Like a Ninja. And we are ready to level up our 5th graders to become middle schoolers, and that is what the goal is this year for you guys is to learn everything you need to to be able to graduate and move on to middle school so we are going to level you guys up like ninjas and you're very lucky because many of the your the teachers on this fifth grade team this year have some middle school experience so they know what you guys are going to need to be successful in middle school as well as the rest of us so let's get started so again, we had our Bitmoji characters out there, but we're actually real people as well. And we have all of our contact information here for you guys, but it is also on the homepage of your course. So if at any time you need to reach out and contact us, you can go to your homepage of your homeroom course and find all of our information listed there. Let's talk a little bit about supplies real quick. There are some supplies that you're gonna need. You don't have to run out to the store and buy them right now, but they're gonna be super, super helpful as you get into the year, and they're probably gonna come up at one point or another as something you might need. So, for example, you might need some dry erase markers. You're gonna need some wide-ruled notebook paper, some pencils, crayons, colored pencils, markers, some things to write with and draw with. Uh, three ring binders or folders, something to keep your material organized is going to be super, super helpful. So make sure you have something you can organize with. Glue stick, scissors, a spiral notebook to take some notes would be great. A ruler, printer and printer paper. We're gonna try to print some stuff out for you guys and do different uh, drop off or pick up things throughout the year. Uh, but for, there's gonna be stuff probably in between that you might need to print. So if you have a printer and printer paper, that's gonna be awesome. Headphones and microphones. When we start doing Zooms where you guys are gonna be in and working in small groups or working with us in, in large groups or whatever it is, we're gonna to need to hear you and you're gonna to need to be able to hear us. So making sure you have a headphone and microphones for your computer would be a must have. A sketchbook is something you're gonna need for art. And then you're also gonna need a dry erase board or pocket. Now. There are some cool dry erase boards out there. There's some cool pocket protector things too that you can use as well. If you don't have those or can't get a hold of them, you can use the back of a three ring binder to write on with a dry erase marker and erase. You can use a Ziploc bag to write on with a dry erase marker and erase. You can use the uh, a pack of notebook paper that hasn't been opened yet. You can write right on that plastic as well. So there's other things you could use. Basically, we just need something that you could write on with a dry, uh, dry erase marker to be able to write on and erase it quickly when we're doing lessons or maybe when you're following along and writing some notes with a video all of these things that you can write on and erase and kind of work with us as we go to maybe save a little bit of paper okay so those are some supplies you might need throughout the year let's talk about real quick how we get access to our courses so the first thing you're gonna to want to do every day is go to my Pasco connect when you go to my Pasco connect you're gonna click sign in and you're going to sign in using your district username and password your district username is that six digit lunch number and then your password is going to be uh, one word. It's like usually like a five letter word with two numbers and then a symbol at the end. So you're gonna sign in using your district username and password. And from there, once you signed into my Pasco Connect, you're gonna click on the My Learning icon. My Learning looks like this, and it houses all of your courses and the coursework that you're gonna need access to. My Pasco Connect, which you can see here on this bigger screen here, it has all different apps that you might need throughout your learning but my learning has all the actual coursework okay so you go to my learning click on there and it's going to open up to uh, all of your courses we also call this canvas that's the platform that these courses are housed in uh, but my learning is like the more friendly name for it once you're in and you see your courses listed on these little baseball card looking things here you're going to click on homeroom your homeroom course is the course that houses all of your core subjects so your ela your math your science and your social studies are all housed here in your homeroom course when you click on that homeroom course, you're gonna get a page that looks kinda of like this, uh, and you'll have math, English, language, arts, science, and social studies all listed out for you there. And each one of those words is a clickable link that will take you right to that course. So let's hop over uh, to Canvas, to my learning, and take a look and see what that looks like. All right, here I am on the dashboard uh, of Canvas here, and you can see my homeroom. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And mine looks a little bit different because I'm a teacher, so I have some other things set up in here, but yours should look pretty similar. So again, here's your homeroom course, we're in we're in the second week here, um, and we can click on math to go to the math course. We can click on English language arts to go to the English language arts course, 
so on and so forth. And we do have listed out here for each subject for math, for what you're gonna need to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so on and so forth for all the different days and all the different subjects. And you can click on any of these subjects to get there. One more thing I wanna point out real quick is your announcements. At the top of each homepage, you have your three most recent announcements. Like this one here for week two, what to complete this week. If I click on this announcement, it's going to take me to that announcement and show me more. So week two, we have uh, everything again listed out here. This time we listed it out by day, days of the week. So Monday for English, language arts, math, science, and social studies, all the things you need to complete, so on and so forth. These um, weekly pacing guide announcements are very important and they have a secret hidden Easter egg at the very bottom, which is a printable pacing guide. So if I click on that, it's actually going to download a copy of a pacing guide that looks like this. That should be easy enough for you guys to print out and kind of check off as you go through the week. So it's just another kind of helper there to help you guys keep organized and keep on track with what you need to do. Okay, announcements are going to be your friend. So I would always recommend checking out those three most recent announcements, but you can go to the announcements uh, icon or tab over here at any time and look through any of the announcements that have ever been posted in the course. So make sure you're keeping up to date on the announcements and you're uh, viewing all the announcements uh, that are super, super important as they come through. One thing you can do to make sure that you're getting all of these announcements is go to your account and to your settings. And here we have ways to contact. And I have my email address in here, but if you have a parent or a learning guide that would also like to get these announcements, they can add their email address in as well. You just click there, put in the email address, and they can get those instant uh, updates on anything that comes through the course, whether it's announcements or grades, feedback, emails, anything like that will come right to them in their own personal email address. So it's super helpful, and I would highly recommend doing that. So let's talk about course pacing and attendance. Well, we definitely want you guys to be logging in daily. We know eSchool uh, offers a bit of flexibility on how you can do things and set up your day, but we want you to be logging in daily uh, and spending about four to five hours on core cor coursework each day. Core coursework in, uh, includes math, ELA, science, and social studies. Those are the big four uh, in your core coursework, and they're gonna, you're gonna spend about four to five hours a day on those, maybe less, maybe more, depending on the day and, and how well you're working. We also recommend that you work on each subject daily. Don't try to do all your math on Monday, all your ELA on Tuesday, all your science on Wednesday, because it's what, what's going to happen is it's going to stack up, and we're not going to be able to give you that that feedback, that quick feedback on those assignments. So if there's like a mistake or a misunderstanding, uh, we won't be able to help you out as quickly on those. Or if you just log in and do all your math on Monday and then you don't log into math again until next Monday, you're gonna miss all of that feedback throughout the week on the different assignments and then you're gonna end up having to backtrack and go back and do some work and make up things that you missed the first time. So we really recommend you do a little bit of work each day in each subject, which is why we lay out those suggested pacing guides in that way. Keep an eye out for those weekly newsletters with those pacing guides. We're gonna release all of that in the new coursework on Sundays for you guys so you can get a head start on your week or at least just take a peek and know what's coming. Make sure as you're working through that you're viewing all of the lessons, watching all of the videos. We're gonna talk about this in depth a little bit more, but just make sure you're looking at all of it. We put it all there for a reason, not for you just to click through and try to get through as fast as you can. We've built this stuff um, and, and other people have built this stuff for a reason, for very intentional purposes. So make sure you're viewing all of it and make sure that you're submitting daily, okay? Don't wait till Fridays to turn everything in. Try to submit daily. That way we can give you that feedback and we can kind of work together throughout the week. If we don't see what you did until that Friday and then we can give you feedback, you might not get that feedback until Monday, even Tuesday, and then you're gonna have to go back and fix and blah, it's just, a, it's, a, it's a pain in the neck. So let's not do it that way. Submit daily so we can give you that, that feedback. Along with that, let's talk about grading expectations. So just like in the brick and mortar school, you guys will earn the grades of A, B, C, D, and U on your progress reports and report cards. Uh, within the course though, you'll also see that you have assignments that are worth points. So those points uh, will add up throughout the year and help to give you a pretty good estimate of, of what your grade is gonna be. And let's say there's an assignment that's worth 10 points and you get a 10 out of 10. Awesome, you did great on that. You mastered those standards. That's awesome, we can move on. But let's say you get a five out of 10. The cool thing is in eSchool, it's not a big deal. It just is gonna show your growth. If you get a five out of 10 on something, we're gonna leave you very specific feedback as teachers. And we're gonna say, hey, you did really awesome on this, but I think we maybe we missed this step. Um, for example, if it was math, maybe we missed this step with lining up our place values when adding. So you can go back and look at that assignment. You can fix up what you did, line up your place values and resubmit, and now 
you can get a 10 out of 10 points. So you can always work towards mastering that that subject, mastering that standard, whatever it, whatever it is we're working on, and then you can always resubmit to get that higher score to really show that you're understanding that standard, okay? Because it's not just about earning all the points that you can, which is great, and we definitely want to do that, but it's really about understanding the subject. So if you do get feedback on something and you're like, well, Mr. Walker, I, I get what you're saying, but I'm still kind of confused. I'm not sure how to do this. Then you can reach out to me. You can leave that in your assignment comments as well. Let me know what you're thinking and we can meet up and, and work through it together. Maybe work in a small group and help you get what you need because we really want you to understand. I don't want you to just click and get everything done as fast as you can. I want you to understand what you're doing. So know that and also know that your grade within Canvas paints just a portion of who you are as a learner because we know that you're going to be doing other things outside of, of the work you do in Canvas like attending virtual lessons with us, meeting with in Erla conferences or math DBAs and different things like that. All of those things are going to paint the picture of you as a learner, not just the point value in Canvas. That'll paint a pretty good portion of it, but there are other things that come into play as well. And we're going to be doing uh, progress calls and stuff and, and keeping a very open line of communication with your parents and with you so you know exactly where you're at and how to progress and meet the goals that you want to meet this year. So let's talk now a little bit about lessons and what you can expect to uh, to get from us because because we're teachers we love to teach that's what we do so weekly we're going to be starting to offer some virtual lessons online and all of the fifth grade teachers will be offering a virtual lesson and you are more than welcome to join any teacher at any time that's convenient for you this lesson is going to replace some of the course content for that day so if you come to a lesson with me on a Wednesday and we're doing math. We're going to do that math content for that day together in that lesson. So you don't have to go back and then do that coursework on top of that. We're going to do it together as a class, right? We're going to be working on those schedules and hopefully sending them out very, very soon. Uh, we'll also have some one-on-one and -on -one small group discussions or small group uh, lessons as needed, as well as discussion-based assessments, which happen in math. And this is where you reach a point in math where you're just going to uh, set a time or pick a time to check in with your teacher and talk about math a little bit. It's not a test. It's not a quiz. We're not trying to catch you if whether or not you did your work. We just want to talk through um, how you're doing in math, maybe solve some problems together and make sure that you guys are good to continue to keep moving forward in math. It's an excellent way for us to get together and talk about goals and next steps and, and that kind of stuff. And we're going to do a similar thing for reading, which is our early reading conferences. The early reading conferences, we'll meet, we'll talk reading, we'll talk about our goals and where we want to move to next and we'll set those goals and then we'll meet again for next time. So it'll be fun to do a little bit of both uh, in math and reading and be able to really see where you guys are at to be able to paint again that, that good picture of who you are as a learner. Let's talk a little bit about the coursework now with Eureka Math and the daily format to it. So every day you're going to have a concept development video and problem set. You're going to have some practice and learn and then you're going to have either an application problem or a debrief. You're also going to have every once in a while some topic quizzes, module assessments, end of module assessments, and then those DBAs which we just talked about. If I hop over to a math course real quick and let's say we'll take a look at lesson one, okay? And, and lesson one and all the subsequent lessons are going to look very, very similar. You're going to start with a learning goal, what it is that we're working on. You're going to have a little intro for the concept development. You'll have a list of some materials you'll need. Uh, I would check out these before you end up printing them because sometimes it's just like a place value chart. Sometimes it's just like a rectangle, something you could very easily draw on a whiteboard or a piece of paper. So even though they're listed here, doesn't necessarily mean you need to print them out. Then you're going to have a concept development from uh, Mr. Walker. He's a good guy. Um, he's going to kind of walk through the process for that day, whatever it is that you're working on in math. You're going to go through some problems and stuff together. After that, you're going to have Zern. So this is the one part where you're actually going to have to leave Canvas, and you will go to My Pasco Connect. And when you're on My Pasco Connect, you can click on Zern, and it will walk you through the steps that you need to do there. Now, as you can see, we listed out the things that you need to do in Zern for the day for that lesson. These top three are the main things that we want you to get to. If time becomes an issue, these last two things are are a bonus, right? They're exactly what they say they are. The math chat and the bonus are just kind of bonuses. So if you can get to those, awesome. You're going to have some great extra practice. You're going to kind of review some of the things that we already did in the video. But if you have to, uh, if you have to move things around because of lack of time, those two things are optional. Okay. But the first three, we really, really want you to do. That's really good practice. After you've watched the video with me, you've done some practicing in Zern. We're going to do a, a little sensei check-in. This is a time where you guys get to talk with your learning guide, and we provide you with a question to kind of uh, spark that discussion. So talk about what you did. You can talk about this uh, question right here with your learning guide. And then 
you have a problem set. So the problem set is available right here for download or to complete digitally, and there's directions on how to complete it digitally and some other announcements. Uh, if you guys need help with that, please email your teacher and let them know. But on that problem set, there's going to be some specific questions we want you to answer. Like here, we want to see questions one, two, and four. We want to see your answers and, and your work to those questions. We would like to see you do these on your own as well. So if you're going to practice a little bit with your learning guide and maybe do a few questions with them first, pick questions that aren't one, two, and four, at least for this particular problem set. Pick some other questions, practice them with them, but these questions we want to see you do independently. If they're not right or if there's areas for improvement, that's where we're going to leave you that feedback in the question and let you, or in the problem set assignment comments we will say hey this was really great but let's take a look at this again or whatever it is we can leave you that feedback so don't worry if they're not 100 percent correct that's what we're for here for as teachers to be able to look through those for you uh, but we're gonna you're gonna submit those two here and there is some extra homework practice here as well if you need it but you'll just upload a, a file whether it's a picture or if you scanned it in or if you completed it digitally you'll come you'll upload your problem set with these questions answered and each problem set is going to have uh, different questions that we ask for uh, as you turn them in. So make sure you pay attention to that. Okay, so that's it for the main like main part of the lesson: video, Zern, debrief with your parent or learning guide, and then submit these problems. On top of that, though, you'll also have either an application problem or a debrief. A debrief is going to be that same thing that you just kind of saw with your learning guide, except that now you're going to post that question to the rest of the class. So in this particular lesson, you're comparing the solutions you found. So you would just reply here and compare your solutions and explain how you compared them, okay? That's the debrief. You just kind of take part in that, share your thoughts, and go from there. An application problem is going to look a little bit different. An application problem is going to be another discussion board post, but this time you're going to actually walk us through the steps that you took to solve this problem. So here's the problem here. You're going to look at it, and what you're going to post as part of the application problem is the steps that you took that read draw write strategy and how you use that to help you solve the problem there's more information on what an actual math talk looks like there's a video that explains that more in depth if you'd like that uh, it should be sent out in an announcement if not ask your teacher and they can get it to you but that's the difference between a debrief and an application problem a debrief is just kind of sharing some thoughts an application problem is actually explaining to us how you solve the problem so those are your math courses. Let's move on to ELA Science and Social Studies. In ELA Science and Social Studies, you're going to have a lesson on the topic, and then you're going to have a quiz or an assignment following that up. In ELA, you'll also have those reading conferences, the early reading conferences, and ELA Science and Social Studies will all have end of module assessments. Let's take a jump over to the actual ELA course and see what that looks like. All right, guys, so in the module for ELA, you'll see a link here to a, uh, a lesson, quote, the mystery of the creepy creatures sounds exciting right so you click on this and it's a link that takes you right to your FLVS content now one thing I want to point out is that your content lives here in this window within canvas uh, but you do not want to click this next button until you've explored all the content within here first you're actually going to use these arrows up here to help you navigate this this particular lesson has eight pages in it okay right now I'm on page one of eight so when you have this lesson you're gonna read through all eight of these pages okay and each page is gonna have something different on it sometimes they have little interactive games sometimes they have videos sometimes they have different things going on in them okay so you want to make sure to explore all of this stuff and complete all of the activities that are found within there since this is ELA you will also have some books to read and here's a little interactive here as you can see Okay, you could check for understanding as you go through. And one thing I want to point out is that sometimes you might come to these like things like graphic organizers and stuff like that, okay? And maybe maybe for this particular lesson, you don't have to turn in that graphic organizer, okay? But as you can see, it says, in this lesson, it says, take out your brain, uh, brainstorm mind map and a print copy of the graphic organizer. That's because this brainstorm mind map is something that you did in the previous lesson. So if you just clicked through and you didn't actually do it, now that you're hitting this lesson, you're going to be like, oh man, I never did that. So you're going to have to backtrack and go back. So make sure as you're going through these passages and these pages within these lessons that you're completing what it is, uh, what it's asking you to do. So in this case, we're going to fill out the text-based graphic organizer. So here's the graphic organizer. I'm going to download it. These Materials should also be available in that binder if you came and picked up your materials binder at Pasco eSchool. If not, you can also complete them digitally using the same, uh, the same way we could do for the math. And again, that's in an announcement or you can ask your teacher for directions on that. So you're going to want to complete those things. You're going to go through all of these pages. Okay. 
and then the last page is going to tell you what to do now. So it's time to complete and submit your text-based graphic organizer that you worked on during the lesson. So that organizer is what you're going to actually submit. So now that you've done everything and you know what to submit, that's when I can click Next. And that Next is going to bring me to the actual assignment where I'm going to turn something in. Okay, and there's the directions there again if you need them. All right, sometimes you'll have an assignment where you have to turn something in. Other times you're just going to have a quiz, like here you just had to take a quiz. But even though I didn't have to turn something in here, we know that that graphic organizer that I was supposed to do in this lesson is part of what gets turned in in this lesson. So keep that in mind as you work through or else you're going to end up uh, getting caught up in stuff and having to backtrack and go through work. Science and social studies is going to look very, very similar to this. The layout and everything is going to look very similar except that it's going to be science and social studies content. So you guys should be able to navigate through that okay. So that's ELA science and social studies for you. Just some more tips real quick. Make sure that you're scrolling all the way down within that page that you're not clicking next until you get to the end of the lesson. That little icon there will show you how many pages you have to read through. 8 of 14. You can jump back and forth if you need. Then you can click next when you are completely, completely, completely done. So again, I want to welcome you guys to fifth grade at Pasco eSchool. Hopefully this was enough to get you all started and get you ready to, to work or at least give you a, maybe a little more in-depth of a look for those of you that have already gotten started. If you need anything at all, please reach out to us. Let us know. We're super excited to work with you and to see all the things you guys are going to accomplish this year. So again, guys, welcome. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you soon.